Hey folks, Jonathan here. I uh, wanted to show you a truck that I picked up. About uh, two weeks ago, my wife and I went to uh, Golden Corral, and we sort of, or I took the Golden Corral Challenge. That's where you uh, eat buffet and try to make it home before you have to run out in the woods. And uh, anyway, we got behind this truck on the way back. And this is another one of the U-Haul Internationals, the 1654s, you know, about all of them are 89 models. And uh, as I was behind it, I, uh, I kind of knew who the guy was that had it because I'd seen him driving it once before. And I told my wife, I said, I really, really need that truck. And uh, I want this truck, I wanted the truck for parts. And uh, he had been driving it around and pulling a trailer with it with no bed on it. So anyway, uh, the night before last, I got a call uh, from a guy that had his uh, truck stuck in a pasture and I went out and this was it so I asked him uh, you know about the truck and he said yeah I'd like to sell it and I said what do you want for it and he gave me the price and I told him I said well I'll take it you know uh, the price was so cheap I just couldn't pass it up plus uh, I didn't even charge him for pulling it out it was so cheap so uh, anyway I, I run home got the money went back up my wife dropped me off and I paid him and drove it home and uh, good running driving truck no problems with it uh, no you know major issues whatsoever but the reason I wanted it I'm eventually going to pull the engine and transmission out and put it in the, the red rollback with the yellow front and I know that we've done went through the clutch on it quite a, you know quite a bit lately but now this may not be anytime real soon but I'm gonna have this thing and the reason I'm doing that uh, that truck has some issues with oil burning and uh, it's smoking a little bit at idle, and it's getting getting worse. You notice noticeably worse, but I've got a lot of miles on it. And I, I couldn't even guess the mileage on it because the speedometer had went a long time ago, and we didn't fix it. We just used GPS uh, on the dash. We got you know we know the speed anyway, and plus it's governored, so it's only going to go so fast. But uh, anyway, I figured uh, mine also every once in a while uh, will jump out of third gear when you get under a load. And they don't do it very often, but you know I've noticed it, and and uh, don't uh, don't like it too well. So this one's got a really good transmission. It shifts a lot tighter than it. It don't have nearly as many miles on it. So I figured the engine transmission. I need the air compressor for my wrecker I built. Uh, my air compressor has went out on it. It actually locked up and. Uh, you know took the belt off so now I, the only thing that really is air on it is besides the hose reel to be able to air up a air brake truck it uh, also my remote control works off of air and so I can't re use my remotes right now the wireless remote so I've got to get that taken care of and uh, let me see a lot of other little odds and ends uh, my heater motor uh, keeps burning the switches up and this one works really well so we're gonna take it out but uh, but I really want that air ride. The four-door uh, top kick has link air ride on it and Really quick. I learned that I don't like it whatsoever and I would much rather have this U-Haul air ride Now there's a difference in the frame as you can see it kicks up goes from about I think eight inches or nine inches down to six inches So we'll have to do some changing on the back of the frame, but I think it's worth the, tr the trouble to do because uh, the suspension is just so much nicer and I can bolt that rear back in place of where this rear is at and then I can save this rear as an extra one because I'm running two trucks with you know that's this style uh, with that same rear end and uh, you know the parts are nice to have and I you know later on if I needed an engine if I even went and looked for a used engine I was going to pay more for a used engine than what I would have paid for this whole truck and uh, that's how cheap it was. So. And it's pretty ratted. Uh, the floor's got, I'm assuming, rust right here. Yeah, it's rusted out really bad right there, but you know, that don't matter to me. Runs good. Carries good oil pressure. Charges. So the heater, uh, the heater blower works really good. The heater works good, and uh, I don't know about the air conditioning. It's too cold to check it, but another good windshield if I need one. So really nice to have parts. So anyway, sometimes you look up 
And, uh, and I don't use any of these front ends, but this was what was on mine when I got it. And, you know, I change them all over. And I've actually got a couple of these front ends, so I'm thinking that when we pull this front end off, I'm probably going to put it on Facebook Marketplace for free if I can get somebody to come get it. And uh, I don't think it's busted anywhere. It's actually in really good shape. Uh, got mud on it. I think somebody tried to pull him out with a uh, pickup truck before I got there to pull him out with a wrecker. Yeah, this one's not busted anywhere. It's got a little bit of damage right here, but nothing major, but somebody can use it. But, you know, they're, they're fiberglass, so they're kind of hard to get rid of when it comes to scrapping or anything, so I would just uh, let, it, uh, let it go for free if anybody needs it. And then, uh, you know, got extra doors. Usually these things rust out right here from the batteries being down here. And surprisingly, this one's not rusted there. It's just rusted in the floor. And I would say that evidently the vent window must leak pretty bad or something. Or I bet, see the roof dented? That's probably what it is. There's probably actually a hole up there. It's leaking water down through it. There's, there's some reason that it, it rusted right there because, you know, with not having any rust anywhere else, uh, something's up. But, you know, normally, like, it, this truck would be a really good, easy, fixable truck if, uh, you know, I was looking for another one to put together but uh, you know there's just a lot of stuff I can use my mufflers starting to rust out these mufflers are expensive so you know it's two in pipe and one out use that I can always use these drive shafts frame rails I mean it's just there's so many parts here that uh, that I can use the emergency brake works really well on this one so we'll clean all up um, you know when I when I do get ready to change the engine transmission I'll just change the whole thing and uh, and you know there's at least a couple hundred dollars worth of batteries in it so, uh, definitely a, a really good parts truck. So, all right, I wanted to show you, give you a little update on the 350 engine, the uh, small block I picked up. Okay, here's the 350. Had a chance to finally pull the other head off, and I think we found the issue that they thought was a uh, spun rod burn. Uh, if you look, the piston's busted here, and there it is. And this one's busted around the top of the ring gland. And uh, to let you know what I think caused it. Now, I'm not you know, uh, saying I know for sure, but if I was to guess, you know, guess at it, I'd say they got steel head gaskets. They had 64 cc chamber heads, so we're looking at about 10 and a half to 1 compression. So you know, you're right there in that spot where you shouldn't be running 87 octane. And spark knock, detonation, pre-ignition, whatever you want to call it, uh, I'm sure was the issue with this. And uh, if they didn't have the timing right, or if they was running the fuel too lean, chances are, you know, that it, it made it even worse. Uh, but I'd say that's what the problem was. That's why this busted. And I know that, you know, most of you have probably heard an engine that was spark knocking and, and carrying on, but... That piston, this got, of course, on top of the piston and hammered. And uh, I didn't see any valve issues, but, of course, we're going to pull the heads down anyway, so we'll be able to check and see if we got a bent valve or anything like that. Uh, and this one's the same way. Looks just like it. So, uh, pieces of piston everywhere. So, I think we figured out the problem, and we may, you know, just knock the pistons out and clean the block up and see if uh, maybe we can hone it out enough to, to save the block. Uh, I don't think it hurt it anywhere, and uh, we'll see if it'll stay 30 over, you know, if, uh, it, you know, even if it's worth boring or going any size over, but anyway, that's our, uh, that's our problem, that's why we didn't find any issues on the crankshaft, no spun burns or anything, they just assumed that's what happened, um, and I was pretty sure that there was a problem with the, uh, and I still think there was a problem with the starter, uh, one of the torque converter bolts swinging around hitting the starter or something. Uh, which I don't think, I don't know if it would have, could have hit the starter or not, but it was hitting something. There was some metal inside the back of the bell housing. But, uh, but that's definitely what our issue is. And I would say it's probably, you know, detonation, pregnition, spark knock. So. All right. There's your update on that. And let me see, 59.4. Okay. It's been really cold. Uh, we had the, uh, cruise in last night, uh, Quite a few people showed up, and we had a good time. And Mike, uh, 
I don't know if I can unload the video on here or not, but I will if I can. But he uh, he spun a tire until it blowed out on the, uh, the old Van Mino, and uh, he was having a good time. But uh, anyway, there's a the master cylinder. Here's the parts we need. Uh, got lucky, a friend of mine called him up. He said, yeah, he had it. I went over to get it, and he'd already cut it off and just grabbed the whole master cylinder. I went over with tools to take it apart, but basically this is just a banjo fitting and the bolt with the hollow for the brake light switch. Of course, this brake light switch is no good, but that's not, a, that's not an issue. We needed this, the copper washers, and the bolt. So we've got exactly what we need now. And that was the, that was my biggest hold up on this car, was them parts. And, uh, you know, we think we've got everything else, so now we can get to work and get it together and see if we uh, can get this thing driving. And hopefully that'll be really soon. And matter of fact, tomorrow is going to be a really good day to work on it. So we're going to see what happens tomorrow. And, uh, and I've had a lot of people talk about the paint. It is geranium. I think is what it's called. It's whatever that flower is. It's not rose or uh, there's been a bunch of people that has put different names, but we checked the paint codes on this and this was geranium. The top was something white. I don't remember, but anyway, uh, absolutely was geranium. And we're going to keep cleaning on this and see if we can get that, get that off of it. And, uh, and I did stick the hose back over here where it belongs. I had a few people say something about that. And, uh, but I got to pull the carburetor off anyway, so it don't matter. But, uh, got a few like I said vacuum lines hoses and stuff to take care of and try to get our passing gear hooked up like it's supposed to be and uh, hopefully this is everything's gonna work out good uh, the only thing I haven't done and I haven't even attempted to do is anything to do with the exhaust uh, our leak is right down here in the downpipe and the two pieces of tailpipe so uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and get it running and see if we can drive it before we do that and uh, so we should be good to go with that. I've got to pick up some antifreeze and I've got to pick up some brake fluid and we can start getting these brakes bled out and uh, that should take care of that problem. So we've got the fan. I uh, haven't put anything on because I've got to do the adapter for the alternator. I'm going to put a GM alternator on. I thought about the generator, but you know, then again with the light light situation, it, you know, the, gener the alternators just work out better and we don't have original radiator. We don't have original engine. So, I mean, it's not, it's not like we're really worried about it being everything original. Now they do buy, buy new wipers and arms. Uh, we'll see what happens with uh, with that vacuum wiper motor. Uh, the electric motors are very, very expensive for this car, so I don't see myself putting one on there. We'll see how the vacuum works out. Uh, got a windshield getting priced. We'll see how that works out. I don't know. We may put one in it, we may not. So I really like, uh, I like the sticker on the side showing that it's been since 1977 that it was on the road. But uh, I'd still like to have a windshield in it because, you know, the worst part's right here in front of the driver, of course. But uh, anyway, so I think that catches everybody up on everything. And uh, of course, I've been doing a lot of towing and uh, trying to do, get my, everything straightened out on videos for recoveries and, and all that stuff. So we'll have some of that soon. but. Been picking up quite a few and uh quite a few bad wrecks and you know it's uh it's just a mess and you know young people don't realize and i'm not saying these were young people here but it seems to be a lot of young people and they don't realize that when you're doing 55 60 mile an hour and you're sitting in your car and it's like sitting in the living room at your house they don't they don't understand the dangers and I put my son in a 64 Chevrolet pickup when he turned 16. Uh, three speed on the column, uh, drum brakes, and uh, you know, no power brakes, no power steering. So he didn't have time to be doing anything but driving. When you hit the brakes, you're not sure which way you're gonna go, left or right or whatever. You don't, you know, you spend all your time driving and he never had an accident, never had an issue, never had a problem. I think the problem today is we put a kid in a car that and they're trying to make cars to where everything's automatic and you're not having to do anything and, and they lose their fear and they just don't realize what can happen at 60 mile an hour. And uh, texting and driving and I mean, it's getting worse and worse. I'm seeing it all the time. So anyway, be safe out there. Appreciate everybody watching. Till next time. Bye.